Greetings and good evening. Welcome to tonight's episode of the Psychic Inside Show. Inside Show. Say that three times fast. Apparently, I can't today. I'm your host, Joelle, and I am the vibrarian. I am here to elevate, enlighten, and empower. Every Tuesday, we're here on Blog Talk Radio on the Vibrary Radio Network, interviewing people who have really gone through a journey in their life as they have uncovered their psychic gifts and abilities. So uh, I have had the most amazing conversations with people for the last few years, and it really is uh, very interesting how many different ways people really discover how their extrasensory gifts work, and that's the beauty of these stories is that it shows us that everyone is psychic, you just may not recognize it, and hopefully by hearing these particular interviews every week, you have an opportunity to connect with a story that will touch you in some way, shape, or form, and maybe help you unlock and step more fully into who you are able to be. Now, the phone line for the show is 646-787-8436. If you're calling, you can just press the pound one key if you would like to ask a question about the story that you're hearing during tonight's show. We're also online. There's a chat room if you're on blogtalkradio.com slash the library. You can drop your questions in there, and I'll also post them over. And I invite you to connect with me on all of my social channels. You can find me at The Vibrarian. That's T H E V I B. E R A R I A N. And that's on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, you can tag Good Vibe Tribe if there is something that is uh, catches your eye that you think is positive and uplifting and needs to be shared. Please tag me, tag Get Lifted, tag The Vibrarian. Please, because I'm all about passing on the positivity. And you do too much negative sharing, and I'm all about putting um, put it into the atmosphere for it to be positive and instead of negative. Try to use my superpower, good, not evil. So. I'm so excited about tonight's show. As I've said, I've interviewed probably people about what their journey looks like. And this is going to be the second time that I get to have a uh, conversation with somebody who is in a profession that is closely related to my 3D profession. You know, uh, We call it 3D and 5D, right? So we all go to our 3D kind of life for our corporate jobs and careers and things. But then those of us that are doing that in a different way or at a higher frequency, we call that being in 5D. So in the 3D world, I worked around a lot of lawyers and attorneys as a librarian in that field. But in the 5D world, you know, I'm operating as the vibrarian. And so my guest this evening she is very similar, I think, for kindred spirit sisters on a level here because she is an actual attorney in the 3D, and she has truly merged herself in a very forward-facing way because her brand name and her where you can find her, she's Misty Oaks Paxton, the spiritual attorney. So I'm so excited to get to talk with someone who is waving a flag that is so bold and striking. Misty, thanks for coming on the Psychic Inside show tonight. I'm so excited you're here. I am thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you know, as you say in big, bold letters, a spiritual attorney, you are actually a practicing, if somebody needs a lawyer, they can call you up in your office and you can do lawyerly things for them. Is that correct? They can, although I am transitioning at this point to my 5D lifestyle full time. But uh, yes, I have been a practicing attorney for the past 12 years. I've done a few different things over my my tenure, but uh, these days I do real estate closings mainly. So if anybody is uh, buying a house or refinancing, feel free to contact me, and uh, I can hook you up there too. (laughs) 
Well, you know, it's so interesting because, you know, the law is a very complex thing in the United States. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all know Absolutely. we've heard about the rigors of law school and what kind mm-hmm. of experience that is. But also then being a practicing attorney out in the world serving, you know, clients is Mm -hmm, quite mm -hmm. rigorous as well. Now, when you Mm -hmm. were in that phase of your life, uh, law school Mm -hmm. and moving into your career, did you know already that you had psychic gifts? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, So I've always been deeply spiritual, always been deeply um, in tune, if you will. I tell people that at seven years old, I can distinctly remember being seven and almost every single night going underneath my covers and hyperventilating because I like the feeling of feeling lightheaded. And while Mm. I was feeling lightheaded, I would ask just out loud. I didn't label it or put a name on it or anything. I would just ask, what is my purpose? Why did you send me here? What am I here to do? And I would do this almost Mm. every night because I knew that I had been sent here for something. I just wasn't sure what it was. And, uh, yeah, so I've always been deeply spiritual, uh, always been fascinated by divinity, spirituality, Mm. metaphysics. Um, And it was actually, in fact, the stress from law school and the pressure of Mm -hmm. law school that led me back to that path of uh, developing my spiritual practices to keep me sane and grounded in the whirlwind that was law school. So, yeah. Yeah, that's an intense time. I mean, your brain is packed Mm -hmm. with all kinds of very – very specific information. So in terms Mm -hmm. of the amount of logic and being in the mind space, that is a very, Mm -hmm. very high level energy time period for looking about three years for people who are unfamiliar with like the law school process. And then there's the taking the bar exam, which is like the ultimate ultimate (laughs) test exam. So that's like Mm -hmm. the opposite of, metaphysical meditation whole <laughs> space for sure right. so were Absolutely. you seeking I mean, out the, the meditation the was... portion yes so the bar <laughs> actually studying for the bar exam was probably one of the most stressful times of my entire life to be honest with you uh you basically have to know retain and be able to reiterate well uh three years of law school on a two-day exam so you have to cover all the, the subjects, all the areas. You have to be able to write an essay, answer multiple choice. I mean, you have to know what you're doing. And as expensive as it was and as stressful as it was, I said, I'm never doing this again, so I'm going to get it right the first time, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, so I was quite stressed, unhealthy, you know, living off of coffee and no dose and, you know, just – just really, really stressed, and that really led me back to um, really just saying to myself, I can't keep this up. I cannot continue this level of stress, Um, Mm -hmm. and so it led me to looking for an alternative that was healthy because what I was leaning on at the time was not healthy, you know, no sleep, Mm -hmm. you know, studying all the time, running, you know, it was just, it was uh, intense. So that really led me back to a meditation practice. Um, I okay. began to learn techniques for meditation and breath work, really just breathing through everything. Um, I began to learn uh, a gratitude practice. I would started my days off with writing a list of 10 things to be grateful for and meditating in the feeling of feeling the gratitude for each of those things. Um, mm-hmm. I started my visualization practice. Uh, seeing myself passing the bar, seeing the results in my hands, seeing, you know, me as an attorney and kind of visualizing what I wanted the end result to be. So that Mm -hmm. high stress actually led me back to my true self. And I find that it's in the times when we're the most challenged or when we're Mm -hmm. ready to give up or when we feel like I can't do this anymore that we're really led back to where we were always supposed to be anyway. So that's <laughs> pretty much my story. <laughs> I'll say that's ironic, right? How it turns out like that, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, absolutely. when you were in, when you were entering law school, did you have one of those kind of like 
I want to help people, so I'm becoming an attorney to fight for justice kind of drive? Or, or what drew you to the profession uh, as as a career pathway? That's an interesting question. A um, couple different things. I, I feel like I always knew I wanted to be an attorney, to be honest with you. I saw Johnny Cochran, uh, you know, litigating the O.J. Simpson trial, and I watched him intently, and I was like, I want to do that. I want to do what he's doing. I love it. Uh, I felt drawn towards it. And so I kind of always knew from that moment that that was something I wanted to do. Um, I just never thought I would actually do it because in my head I was like, Mm. oh, it's three years. It's a lot of work. I don't know. But, um, Mm. you know, graduated college at 25, and I was like, three years is going to, you know, that's going to fly by. So, um, or Mm -hmm. no, I'm sorry. How old was I? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I graduated in my early 20s, and I figured by the time I finished law school, I would still be in my 20s and young enough to do what I wanted to do, so why not? Uh, Going Mm. into law school, I knew it was something I would be good at um, because it came fairly easy to me. Uh, The concepts and the logic and the analytics and all of that came fairly easy, but I really did not know what I wanted to do after law school, to be honest with you. I, I thought I wanted mm. to litigate, and then, uh, like I said, I wanted to be like Johnny Cochran. And then when I got hired at a large law firm here in Atlanta doing litigation, I was like, oh, Lord, this isn't what I thought it was mm. going to be. <laughs> so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What, you know? Um, but, yeah, I went into it thinking I was going to fight for uh, justice in the courtroom. That was the, the ideal. And then when I actually mm-hmm. started doing that, you know, sometimes you think you want things, and then when you get them, they're, you're like, uh, I don't know if this is really what I wanted, universe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, let me rework mm-hmm. this order with the universe. So, yeah, that's what happened. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it gives people a lot of pause when they have invested a – considerable amount of time and resources in terms of money, say law school or medical school or advanced Mm -hmm. degrees and certification. And then when Mm -hmm. you get where you've set your sights on and you realize, wait a second, this is not bringing me Mm -hmm. my happy anymore. Did it do it for a while or was it pretty quickly you started feeling like the next pull on your soul or did you have a happy honeymoon phase? Mm, So it's interesting because when I was being courted, if you will, by a few different law firms, I loved that time period. I mean, that was truly the honeymoon phase, you know, they give you all the benefits, all the perks, all the events, all the, you know, all the stuff. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I could do this. I love this. <laughs> and then when you actually start working at the firm, well, at least for me, I can't speak for every first-year associate's experience, but things got real pretty quickly. And uh, for me, I think the thing that hampered my happiness the most was that I felt like I couldn't be myself. I could not be mm-hmm. fully the, you know, uh, the person that I was, I felt like I had to put on a mask. I had to sniggle and giggle and tap dance and be mm-hmm. somebody and something that I really wasn't. And I found myself fairly quickly feeling like this can't be all that there is. Like there, it mm-hmm. just cannot be. Um, mm-hmm. And so I was pretty disenchanted pretty early on, working 60, 70, 80 hour weeks, being there all the mm-hmm. time. It was just a lot. Um And so I left uh, the firm uh, after a while and started my own law firm. Um, Mm -hmm. And that actually brought me a lot of happiness. I did enjoy that um, for a while because I was truly helping people. I was doing foreclosure defense, loan modification, Mm -hmm. short sales, uh, bankruptcies, helping people save their homes. Um, So Mm -hmm. that really brought me a lot of reward uh, because I was, you know, very successful at it. And people were able to stay in their homes and they could afford it. So that Mm -hmm. I enjoyed. However, the other aspect of that is, uh, you know, when you are in a position of service, a lot of times people expect you to be a magician. They expect you to be, Mm -hmm. you know, the Messiah. They expect you to work a miracle, part the Red Sea, turn water into wine. They expect you to do it all. Mm -hmm. And I Mm -hmm. think sometimes they have – 
lofty expectations, number one. And number two, I often find, to be perfectly honest, that people do not want to take responsibility for their part in things. They do not, you know, for the most part want to be accountable in that profession. You know, they don't want to say, well, no, I didn't make my mortgage payment, you know, even when you, you know, uh, got me the modification, and so now I'm asking you to do it again, and you need to do it by Friday, and I need it for a discounted rate, you know, they don't ever want to say, but it's my fault or my, you know, uh, it was on me that this happened, you know, so they want to blame you for everything in, in the profession that I was in. So I was getting a lot of that, a lot of high pressure, a lot of expectation, a lot of lack of accountability on my client's behalf, to be honest with you, and it just, after a while, the joy in helping people got hampered by the the weight of, you know, mm-hmm. it's all your fault if you don't fix what, what I did, you know, and mm-hmm. hook me up on the price too, you know what I mean? Oh, so, right. So it was a lot of that. So, um, you know, people wanted the world for 25 cents sometimes, I felt like, and I'm like, that is unrealistic and unreasonable. So after a while, mm-hmm. I just um, – I don't know. I I became, again, quite despondent, feeling like this was not the place for me to be, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. I could do it. I was good at it. But I was not happy in what I was doing, you know. And I'm a passionate Scorpio. I'm a full-blooded 100% Mm -hmm. Scorpio. (laughs) So (laughs) I feel like all my Scorpios, you know, if y'all are listening, yes, I am fully passionate. So I feel like whatever I'm doing, if I can't be passionate about it, then I'm really not all that interested in doing it, to be honest with you. You know, I'll do it for a little while, but, you know, if I can't be fired up about it, then I'm like, what's the point? Mm -hmm, So that's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what that led to in my own profession, in my own practice. Mm -hmm. Now, parallel to while you're living this experience, you also then, from what I understand in reading your bio, like you'd always been – uh, like reading, doing readings for yourself and then readings for others in some capacity. Mm-hmm. And then you reconnected more intensely through your law school experience. At what point and how did it emerge then to say there is a mm-hmm. spiritual aspect of work that I want to now push forward mm-hmm. while I'm in this mm-hmm. very traditional 3D profession. What was that yes. experience like for you? That's interesting. That's a great question. Um, so in law school and really towards the end, um, I started the meditation. I started the visualization. I started the gratitude. I started some studies on uh, spirituality, energy, uh, healing, and all of that. It wasn't until I actually moved to Atlanta and started at the firm, and I'm going to shout out my cousin. I have a a dear cousin who lives in Atlanta. Uh, Her name is Kia Lewis, and she does sister locks for anybody. uh, Shameless plug, she does sister locks. (laughs) (laughs) So if anybody Mm -hmm. needs that done. But um, she (laughs) actually shared with me. (laughs) I'm I'm going to shout out all my folks tonight. So um, Get it in. (laughs) Yes, you know, why not? So uh, she put me onto a book. Uh, called Love Cards, and this book literally changed my life. And this was mm. 12, about 12 years ago. So I've been studying the cards now for 12 years. Um, and so I started, I dove into it. Again, I'm a passionate uh, Scorpio, so I was fascinated. And as any Scorpio knows, we can become obsessed with what we're learning if mm. we're excited about it. So I started studying love cards, birth cards, destiny cards. I started studying readings and, and how to do them. And uh, so I learned quite a bit at that time because, again, I was very disenchanted with what I was doing. So I, I kind of dove into uh, the spirituality and the readings as, you know, a, a soothing, as a catharsis, if you will. Um, and so I studied that for a while. I've been, like I said, studying that for many years. But it was really something I did for myself, and I would just share with some friends or maybe some family members if they were interested. And so and my husband would see me over the years, and he would always say, people need to hear this. People, more people want to hear this. You should do more of this. And I would always say, nobody's going to, nobody's interested in this. Nobody's going to want to hear this. Nobody's going to come to me to get their cards read. Like, you know, so I would, I would do the self-doubt, 
thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I honestly do not know. Um, I really can't tell you. A lot of people ask me, like, when did it change? I don't know. But what I do know is that I started getting deeper into the practices myself. I started studying EFT. I started working on me and healing myself and, and, you know, working on self-forgiveness and all of these things. And all of a sudden, to be honest with you, it seemed like it was suddenly to me, more people started coming to me asking about the cards, asking about readings. It almost seemed like they just started gravitating towards me. So I started mm-hmm. doing more readings, and I had so many people say, you should do this. You should do this for, like, in life. Like, this should be mm-hmm. you. Like, you know, people need to hear this. And so I just started saying, okay, universe, I'm listening. I'm paying attention. Okay. You know, and uh, mm-hmm. things just started really falling into place from there. The more I did it, another person would call. The more I shared it, another person would call the more I got mm-hmm. out there with it, the more I realized that so many people need guidance. They need direction. We need people to be the light, you know. And mm-hmm. once I really identified as a light worker, I decided that this is exactly where I needed to be because, you know, the world right now is there's, I feel, a battle between light and darkness. You know, we see darkness all the time on the news, social media. You know, there are a lot of things to make us feel like the darkness is overtaking the light. And so I truly believe that it's a time for all light workers to decide that they are going to mm-hmm. work their light in whatever capacity they do it. But it is time for us to be the light in the dark places. So that's where I am. I, Sign me up. <laughs> well, you know, I absolutely agree with that. Um, you know, I think that the first, uh, well, not first, but a major wave of people really went through in the last nine years, ten year cycle or so, the transformation to be able to shine their light that is now being seen by a newly awakening group of people, I'm sure that you have found that your business is probably picked up like never before just in time for you to be ready to serve that population. Absolutely. Absolutely. I find that there are so many people seeking the light, seeking guidance, seeking confirmation right now. Um, And really, so I feel like, Several things are happening. I don't want to, you know, take up the whole two hours talking about what I think. But I feel like several things are happening at this juncture. First of all, I feel like we are, as a global consciousness, transitioning into a new age of awareness, right? So I don't know if anyone is familiar with the age of Aquarius, but mm-hmm. as a global mm-hmm. Okay, as a global mental consciousness, we are transitioning into a new age. And so Aquarius is a sign that is very forward thinking. They're very futuristic thinking. They're very open-minded. And so I truly believe that there are so many people awakening. uh, They call it the quickening of the universe. So things are happening Mm -hmm. quickly and people are awakening into this new uh, mindset. Um, And the people that are holding tightly and firmly to their old, outdated, outworn beliefs and thoughts, those are the people that are suffering right now. You know, they are mm-hmm. feeling the resistance. And the people that are opening up and awakening to this, this new thought and new knowledge, they are finding an easier transition. So I find that I'm attracting a lot of people that are awakening and that are seeking the light. I call them light seekers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they are um, looking to new concepts. Uh, they're willing to let go, uh, or at least, you know, for a moment of their, their box of outdated beliefs and open up to some new insight and to some light. So I am attracting a lot of people right now that are uh, seeking answers. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful thing. Isn't that beautiful how it works out like that? One of the aspects that you spoke about is something that is so true and key, I think, to everything is that, We're doing and shining our light because we're living our truthful expression. So the fact Mm -hmm. that you were following the call of your soul that was dissatisfied and did not know where satisfaction 
lied, but you were willing to step out to find it. So by blazing Mm -hmm. that path and your own self, you know, turning to meditation, turning to spiritual things in order to center your own reality and to live more healthily, that is really all that we are called to really do, you know, to embrace mm-hmm. our inner light, then we become light workers as the rest of the world sees our light come on, you know. And Absolutely. sometimes people get intimidated because they feel like it's like this, I have to do this to become a light worker. And it's like, well, no, <laughs> you are a being of light. And as you strengthen your shine, then you will automatically be doing work. It's not that heavy of a a thing. It doesn't need to be that heavy of a a kind of mission flag (laughs) that you're wearing, you know. I find that as humans, we like to overcomplicate things a lot. Um, you know, we, we we do that. We think that we have to do a whole bunch of stuff or study or get, you know, certified to be a light worker or something. And uh, it really is that simple. Find the light, be the light, work the light. Simple. That's right. Find it, so do your own soul searching, you know, do your own seeking. And when I say be the light, what I tell people is, there is something that you're here to do. There is a mission you came here to complete, a purpose that you have. And it's that thing that lights you up and excites you. It sets you on fire. You love doing it. You could do it all the time. You would do it for free. That thing is what you're here to do. And that's why you're inspired in spirit and you're enthusiastic about doing it in Theos, in God, when you're doing it, because that is what you are here to do. And so when you're operating in that space, you're able to be a light. You're able to be all the way turned up, if you will, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I tell people, if you're looking for it, if you're searching for it, number one, you're going to find it. And number mm-hmm. two, When you find that feeling, when you know that you love, that you love, that you love, that you love what you're doing, then do that. Do it as much as you can and as often as you can. And it could be simple. People think it has to be some big lofty thing. It could just be listening to people. You could just love listening and asking relevant questions. You could just love encouraging people. Do that. You know, you could just love and hug. People need more hugs. You know, it could just be right. anything. But whatever you love doing and you're excellent at doing, do that and do it all the way, you know. And for some people, that's actually being an attorney. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't yeah, have oh, to be absolutely. a woo-woo profession for us to right. be happy. There are plenty of accountants and bean counters that are very happy yep. when at the end of the day when they balance the book or found an accounting Absolutely. error that puts them in their happy place. So when that you're in your happy place <laughs> Yeah. Yes. When you're in your happy place yeah. you're you're viral. You know, you're viral in your bad place too, but I mean you're extra viral when you're in your happy place. So Absolutely. what was the Absolutely. Did you encounter any reactions within your peer group of, say, attorneys as you Mm -hmm. began to move more strongly in the direction of the spiritual attorney and the work that you're doing? I got a lot of love and support, to be honest with you. I got a lot of, initially it was bewilderment, like spiritual attorney, what is that? What do they do? Where do they do that at? You know, I got that kind of like raised eyebrow, like, okay, that's different, you know. And then when I explained it, I did a couple readings for people. When they, you know, understood the work, I mean, I just got a lot of people saying that's so creative. I love the name. I, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You know, I'm excited about it. So I got a lot of love, especially from uh, my African-American sisters, you know, my uh, female attorneys, black female attorneys groups, uh, GABA, the groups that I'm a part of online. Yes, Georgia Mm -hmm. Association of Black Women Attorneys. Um, Mm -hmm. There's uh, uh, another group called Babes, Black Attorney Bosses of excellence online that I'm a part of. And they're all like, you know, right on, do it. You know, we're behind you. Uh, So I got a lot of love to be honest with you. Um, I don't, I don't have now here's, here's the opposite side of the coin. 
the resistance I did get and do still get is not from my attorney peer group, but it is mainly from uh, my uh, Christian peer group, um, you mm-hmm. know, being raised Christian. And, you know, we're in the Bible Belt. We're in Georgia. We're in the Deep South in the Bible Belt. <laughs> so, you know, some of these concepts uh, can, I, I suppose, feel threatening when you're in a box, you know, mm-hmm. when you're in a box. It, you know, any these new thoughts and these this concept that God is within can seem threatening or foreign. Um, so I, I actually, before I even stepped out as a spiritual attorney, I really wrestled with that, uh, the, mm-hmm. the question of Christianity and reconciling Christianity with what I'm doing um, because I was raised Christian. And so for a while I was very fearful of what, what, what my parents would think even, you know, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. Mom say if she knew I was reading tarot cards, you know, or what mm-hmm. would my church family that I grew up with say, what would they think of me, you know? And um, so I wrestled with that pretty heavily, I would say. Um, and even still do from time to time uh, with uh, mm-hmm. people uh, from the Christian community. I get a lot of, you know, resistance. Um, but again, my thing is I don't judge anybody's path. I feel like if that's the path that resonates with you, do that. I'm not trying to persuade you or dissuade you, you know, if you feel so led to spirituality, um, and you're willing to open your mind beyond the confines of one book to, um, absorb more knowledge and truth then I'm here to, to assist, you know, so Mm -hmm. I kind of just decided to, um, yeah, just I'm not living to please anybody or for anybody's acceptance or, you know what I mean? Um, I'm mm-hmm. just doing what I know vibrates with me. I just know that this is my path. And so, you know, judgment, good or bad, is kind of not really what I'm concerned with, you know? So. Now, in in terms of the the still kind of struggle between, like, beliefs, that were ingrained as part of a religious instruction and then like manifesting like your real self, as you say, Mm -hmm. you have, uh, do you call yourself or do you lay, do you refer to your gifts as psychic gifts or do you lean more towards intuition and spirituality Mm -hmm. is the way that you talk about it? Is there a a Mm -hmm. language that you use? Yeah, I usually, I typically say I'm highly intuitive. That's typically what I, the phrase that I use. Um, I feel like people attach so much to psychic, that word, that I don't know what people's constructs are around that word, you know. Some people Mm -hmm. think of Miss Cleo, you know, call me now, you know, when you say psychic, Mm -hmm. you uh, you know, they think about so many different things, so I find that the term psychic is often, you know, interpreted based on, you know, different people's perspectives. So I just say I'm highly in tune and highly intuitive. Um, and so I, I feel that that kind of, you know, is, is blanketed enough <laughs> to where people are <laughs> right. inserting their own concepts onto what I do, you know. Right. Well, that's why yeah. I ask because not everybody who who I would say is psychic, not everybody does use that word, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, intuitive mm-hmm. tends to be the softer side of the word that people right. use, like when they say intuitive coaching or intuitive guidance uh, versus yeah. psychic reading, right? Right. Um, right. Or, you know, mediumship or things like mm-hmm. that. They do have a lot of loaded context. Although I will say, you know, we're in an era when like Long Island medium is, is regular TV. Like we're having right. a lot different conversations, even from 12 years ago when you were graduating law school, Definitely. The shift within the profession has gotten a lot more relaxed in general, and I think that as societally, everybody has kind of taken a deep exhale to say, you know what, 
we're going to loosen some of these rigid structures and that's part mm-hmm. of that Aquarian mm-hmm. shift you talk about, but Absolutely. we're like shifting along with it as people are kind of stepping out of boxes, <laughs> so Absolutely. to speak. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's part of it. It's, you know, it's part of being highly intuitive. It's going with the flow, you know, feeling the energy and, and kind of knowing, you know, uh, where to, where to jump in and where to kind of lean back. So I definitely feel like the flow of, like I was saying, our global consciousness is opening more uh, to these concepts. Um, And so, yeah, we have shows, we have you know, uh, some of the greatest spiritual teachers are, you know, psychic, intuitive, visionary, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, they want to call, whatever label you want to put on it. Mm-hmm. But I, I definitely feel that those that are awake and out of bed uh, <laughs> are you know, <laughs> tapping much more into their spirit. So, and the labels are just, you know, whatever a person feels comfortable with. You know, I had somebody ask me um, recently, he said, are you a root worker? And I was like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like that term. I don't know what that means exactly. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't mm-hmm. uh, infringe on anybody else's sovereignty. So I don't, no, right. I don't identify with that. And then he said, uh, are you a witch? And I was like, mm-hmm. mm, I don't like that term either. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that really means enough for me to identify with it, you know. Um, mm-hmm. If anything, I would say I'm a good witch. I don't know <laughs> if I would, you know. I'm, I'm like Glenda the good witch from the Wiz, you know. But, um, but yeah, these terms, I, I just feel like I don't, they don't resonate with me. But when mm-hmm. I think about who I am and what does resonate, I know that I, I am and have always been um, a highly intuitive person, and I've always trusted that. Um, and so, well, I take that back. I have not always trusted it. I have learned mm-hmm. to trust it rather. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. so that's the label that I, I choose, uh, my label of choice, highly intuitive. <laughs> and so your highly intuitive gifts, how do those then operate for you? Mm-hmm. Like would you describe a clear audience, clear or do you – use different language to describe your gifts as two. That's so interesting because somebody asked me that the other day too. So the one that I most closely identify with is clairsentient. Um, I don't know how I know things. I just feel them. Um, Mm -hmm. And I just feel the energy. I just feel it. And I don't know. I'm just, uh, again, getting much, much stronger with my discernment of what it is exactly. Um, so mm-hmm. I am able to just feel the energy. Um, I have some clear audience, um, so that also helps as well when I'm asking for a word. Um, mm-hmm. But mainly it's clear sentience. Um, I feel strongly pulled in my solar plexus when I'm feeling certain energy. So, and, um, yeah, that's that's my main tool for deciphering. Mm-hmm. You know, I... I believe, as I said, that everyone is psychic. And one of the things Mm -hmm. that we're having more conversations about these days is empathy. And the empath Mm -hmm. is becoming a common term where people are recognizing, Mm -hmm. okay, I might have called it my spidey sense in a joking Mm -hmm. fashion, but if I look back on my job and my career, like having Mm -hmm. a knack for or having a hunch when or knowing when the time is Mm -hmm. right to do something, all those Mm -hmm. are manifestations of your clairsentience, mm-hmm. right? But we'll, Absolutely. we'll say, well, a mother knows when her child is sick, and that's okay. But when you right. say that, you know, I had a feeling that I needed to do such and such, then people say, wait, wait, that's a step too yeah. far. You yeah. know what I'm exactly. saying? For somewhere exactly. there's a divide. Exactly. <laughs> so you are yeah. uh, using exactly. your clairsentience in the practice of law already, I'm mm-hmm. sure, because it's one of those things where you're making the analysis so quickly yes. as to the factors, and yet you're knowing which one is going to be the successful pathway forward. Absolutely. That seems like a big psychic little process there, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. 
if Absolutely, you look yes. at it through that filter, you know. Absolutely. It comes in handy. I'll say that much. <laughs> so yeah. it definitely comes in now, handy. But, yeah, I, I totally believe that, and I totally agree with you that I, I do believe everybody is psychic, just like we have five physical senses. We also have what they call the higher senses. So we have perception, imagination, willpower, intuition, mm-hmm. reason. These are all our higher senses. So we all have intuition. Um, it's just that most of the time I find that two of the strongest barriers to us tapping into our intuition are, number one, there's so much noise around us. Mm. There's so much from the moment we open our eyes to the moment we close them, we're going, we're going, we're going. Our alarm mm-hmm. clock rings, we up off our feet, we're running from the, the morning to the night, and we don't have a moment to shut off the noise of the world and really tune in to that frequency Mm -hmm. within that voice within. So that's number one. And number two, I believe that we're a society that has been taught and trained to look outside of ourself for answers, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's one of the larger issues that I feel with religion. When you teach the concept of God outside the self, then you will always Mm -hmm. be looking outside of yourself for divinity. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, we tend to look to everybody and everything outside of us to give us the answers that are already Mm -hmm. within us. And so we're not in the habit, number one, of looking within. And number two, we're not in the habit of tuning in. So I Mm -hmm. find that those two things are the larger barriers to us really all tapping into our own intuitive gifts. I absolutely concur <laughs> with yeah. both of those this both of those sentiments. Weapons of mass distraction. That's one of my pet oh, peeves, you know. Come on. Come on. That's a good we one. We do have a yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, we do have a couple callers who are on the line this evening. Uh, on the Psychic Inside show. I'm always loving the conversations and the interview portion. The readings in terms of having the guests of the evening deliver information for you happens the last portion of the show. So um, I am going to check in real quickly and see if we have any questions about Misty's journey so far. Caller ending in 6007, you're on the Psychic Inside Show. Did you have a question for Misty or were you looking to receive a reading? I actually forgot what I was even going to say because the whole time I'm listening, I'm just like, yep. Yeah, like you know, because <laughs> literally everything you are you are saying. But when I say the past two months, the past two months have been crazy. You know, this whole time, um, I, I've always had this. When you just said look outside yourself, I never did. I always had a problem with you know, um, religion, and you know, it was me making up excuses not to go to church every day just because of the way that it made me feel so oppressed and things like that. So I, I never looked outside myself. So, you know, what you were saying mm-hmm. now, you know, the fact of tuning in. That's exactly what's mm-hmm. been um, activated within me um, the past two months as far as um, tuning in. Like when I, you know, like everything, you know, because the the, not, the concepts with the religion are, they're real. They're, they're you know, they're mm-hmm. fact-based, you know. So, you know, what I call, you know, what happened to me um, January um, 11th well, is what I call my baptismal. You know, it's like it was like a, another mm-hmm like, rebirth, you know, for me as far as, like, you know, activating. So, I mean, so if I do have a question, it's just um, a fact, you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm using language, like, I never used before, you know, talking about the 3D and, you know, the doctrine is within me, you know, I don't have to look mm-hmm. outside myself, like, I don't, you know, like, and people, you know, I, I feel a lot of opposition because I, I, I tell people I, I, I don't read, I am a feeler. I am an empath. That's how I know things. You know, like people ask, like, why did you know that? Like, are you just like, I don't, I don't know. Like how you were just saying, like, I don't know. Like I'm a feeler. So, you know, what I'm feeling to do now, and I've, oh, I've never been much of a speaker, even me speaking now. I'm just like speaking. (laughs) And, you know, that's like something that, you know, like I just, you know, I mean, I guess right now, I guess it would be validation as far as what I'm doing right now, as far as, you know, because I'm opening, you know, myself up more on social media, accepting people and just talking more and doing more. So I just wanted to know, you know, whatever you pick up about that as far as, 
you know, what I'm what I'm doing. I'm thinking, you know, not even thinking about it. I've made well, a decision to quit my job. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I have three kids. Mm-hmm. I just so, got to take care of by myself. Like, I would never do that. Wow. So what we'll do is bring you back on at the last portion of the show and continue that conversation okay. a little bit more specifically for you. And I'm thankful okay. that you're tuning in this evening because nothing is accidental. You know, uh, we mm-hmm, vibrate mm-hmm. as Misty said. I believe it. More and more people saying, I forgot what I was coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, me but we'll come back to what is. Oh yes. My name's Nicole. So, Oh, thank you, Nicole. When is your birthday? Nine thirty eighty two. Okay, got you. Oh yeah, that's okay. an interesting one. We'll okay, definitely... I will share more with you. Mm-hmm. We thank will you circle so much. Thank back you. to thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you, Misty. I think it's beautiful because, like you said, she's speaking words that she never really spoke before. And there's Mm -hmm. concepts and ways of talking about stuff that may not make sense to the people around you. Did you Mm -hmm. experience Mm -hmm. a shift in your social life as you shifted your professional life? Uh, Did you experience kind of a separation of yourself from your old paradigm? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Was that a painful or positive or both experience for you? Um, that's a good question. Huh. So here's the thing. Um, because I study universal laws, I already had the understanding that um, as I raised my vibration, those that were not in harmony with that, uh, things would become disharmonic. So, mm-hmm. for example, um, there were several people around me that it seemed like they wanted to be depressed. They wanted to be down. They wanted to focus on the negative. Um, You know, they wanted to complain. They kind of wanted to be in that space. And so energetically, things just started, you know, it was almost like we were being pulled apart. You know, it was almost Mm -hmm. like we couldn't even stand to to have more than like a five minute conversation. Like we, I couldn't stand to be in that space anymore. And so, Mm -hmm. Because I understand universal laws, I understand that as I raise my vibration, if those people remained on that lower vibration, then energetically we would be held apart um, because Mm -hmm. we would no longer be on that same frequency. And so either that or if we did stay on the same frequency, it would be disharmonic, Um, you know, so Mm -hmm. there would be friction there. And so um, some of those have been difficult. To be honest with you, some of those energetic separations have been difficult. Um, But I do understand that it's almost it's almost like, you know, everybody wants to get to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Right. So everybody Mm -hmm. wants to ascend, but nobody wants to let go of that lower stuff. And so Mm -hmm. I understood and, and consciously intended to raise my vibration and to raise my org field and to to do that with the understanding that those that were in harmony with that, we would, it would be good. And that those that were not in harmony, no judgment, you know, that's who they are and where Mm -hmm. they were, but Mm -hmm. that we would not be able to, uh, to interact for very long, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. Right. um, But again, it's necessary. And for all of those that are are seeking to find their path and seeking to raise their vibration and uh, to go to that next level of living, um, there are going to be some relationships that you might not be able to take with you. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, now here's the other caveat to that. That doesn't have to be set in stone. Should the other person decide that they want to raise their vibration also, and you all can be in alignment once again, then that, Mm -hmm. you know, can happen. But I just decided that I would accept everybody for where they were. And if we were not in alignment at that juncture, then so be it. Um, Mm -hmm. And again, some have been difficult, but necessary, you know. So um, it's part of raising your vibration. Mm -hmm. I think that that's, you know, the the. more experienced 
arc of that says that you know what this is a positive thing you know Mm -hmm. Uh, you're Mm -hmm. many many years into your journey and your understanding and working with the universal in in alignment with the universal laws Um, one thing is that if you are out of alignment then Mm -hmm. like you said being depressed being overwhelmed, not feeling Mm -hmm. passionate about your purpose, feeling Mm -hmm. at odds with your community and what you're doing. Those are natural, not the unnatural, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes the Mm -hmm. world would have you think, well, you you know, you've got this high-powered attorney job. You've got it made. You passed the bar. You're doing so. So you should be loving life right now, right? Right. (laughs) Comes to supposed help from those who may not necessarily understand the deep call of the soul yet, you know. But to say that it's not normal, that's that's not normal for me to feel like this. And I trust myself that myself is telling me that there's a way for me to be happier than what I am currently and that that Mm -hmm. way will be shown to me. Because, like, you didn't see necessarily the spiritual attorney literally, Mm -hmm. although conceptually you had it in your mind that you wanted to be an attorney with a spiritual focus, you know? So it's like... It's future true, and past, true. and yet it's it's connective, you know. That's the beautiful yeah. part. It's like our higher selves really knows what really makes us happy. And it's like, Absolutely. wow, if you would have told me in law school that I would be here 12 years now doing this, right. the bar and all that would have been a lot it. less stressful, <laughs> right? Right, exactly. No, that's true. <laughs> well, what you said is absolutely correct um, because – The term the spiritual attorney came to me during a reading. Uh, A Mm. dear sister, actually one of my spiritual mentors, dear sister of mine, Christian Nicole, she is amazing as well. I told you I'm going to plug all my folks tonight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But she is an amazing (laughs) reader as well. And um, she, you know, sat down. First time I ever met the sister, I sat down and I was telling her, I'm spiritual, but I'm an attorney. You know, I, I'm do, I'm not really <laughs> happy with what I'm doing, but I, I feel a pull towards this, et cetera, et cetera. She said, the spiritual attorney, that's who you are. That is your brand. Mm-hmm. That is what mm-hmm. you are here to do. And I said, you know what? You're right. <laughs> I think you're right. So, uh-huh. But it was an, an alignment with my seeking. And so what I tell people is this. This is why you can see uh, people that are outwardly successful, for example, a Robin Williams or an Anthony Bourdain or, or people that have, you know, um, been in despair and have actually mm-hmm. taken their own lives because it seems mm-hmm. to us on the outside that they have everything, that they're successful, mm-hmm. they're talented, they have money, they have fame, they have it all, and we don't understand how they could be so unhappy They're so depressed Mm -hmm. that they would take their own lives. And I tell people that when you are out of alignment with who you are and what you came here to do, you are going to be unhappy. There is going to be dissonance, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I tell people Mm -hmm. that, you know, your life is one big song. You know, everything Mm -hmm. vibrates. Everything is constantly in motion. So things that vibrate have sound. So mm-hmm. your life is, everything is vibrating around you, so your life is one big song. And so when you are out of harmony mm-hmm. with the key that you are supposed to be playing in, there is going to be a lot of dissonance in your life, regardless of the, the outward accoutrements of success. Mm-hmm. You know, if mm-hmm. you are not literally in alignment with who you are and who you came here to be, then you're not going to be happy. And so I tell people if they find themselves in that space, to begin to seek, begin to ask, just ask the universe out loud, why am I here? What is my purpose? Which direction should I go in? And if you Mm -hmm. seek, as the Bible says, you will begin to find. The answers will begin to come to you. You will begin to be shown. And it could be in the most, you know, out of of the ordinary, uncanny ways, but the universe Mm -hmm. will begin to answer your questions. And so Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I was seeking at the time, and right at the perfect time, I met my dear sister, Christian Nicole, and Mm -hmm. she said, the spiritual attorney, that's who you are, and I picked that thing up, and I took off with it. (laughs) So that is uh, my path, yeah. Well, it's an awesome brand, and it's very unique, I have to say. You know, when I've seen you on Instagram and out in social media, it's definitely a level of professionalism and maturity in your presentation that includes, well, A, it's love the balance chakras and all of that. But, I mean, it's just (laughs) very nice to see that. It's like waving a flag, really, for the profession to say, you know, okay, look, I am the spiritual attorney, you know, and to be able Mm to use the new agey concepts with the old world paradigm in the new way is really what we all have an opportunity to do. And you've really encapsulated that very well. I have another, I I I was have another caller that had a, Oh, yeah, okay, go ahead, because I know he's I just, very instrumental in your graphic he design. He is, he is, and I definitely wanted to shout him out because you mentioned the chakras and, and the, uh, you know, all of the graphics. My wonderful husband, uh, if you go to my website and you see my banners, you see my flyers, he is responsible for all of the branding uh, for the spiritual attorney. So please look him up on Instagram, Daps World Studios, on Facebook at Daps World. Uh, He is the man with the master plan, so (laughs) he is the best. So if you are looking for branding, websites, logos, all of that, he does production, he's a writer, brilliant actor, please check him out um, because he is responsible for all of that, the the beauty that you see (laughs) on my page and the beauty of the logos and the brand, branded by DAP. Well, I love seeing it because it's showing that the Thank two you. of you are each like top of your game doing what you enjoy and love, yet there's an intersection where it crosses that is supportive to each other in your chosen you know, service. So it's nice to see a harmonious partnership working in a family level. You know, that's one of the fears people have about stepping into uh, alternative or new modalities is, well, what will this do to my home? Like, Mm -hmm. if I leave my Mm -hmm. job, what will this do to my financial responsibilities? What will my Mm -hmm. partner say? Are they really down for me? Mm -hmm. Or is this Mm -hmm. going to be Mm -hmm. one step Mm -hmm. too far out there for them to accept me as this? And so when you see couples like you and other people who have been interviewed on the show who are, like, very much like, yeah, my husband knows I'm psychic or he helped me with my business or, you know, my wife, she, Mm -hmm. all that's beautiful beautiful to see that you won't necessarily necessarily Mm -hmm. lose your relationship as you ascend uh you know and i think it's a blessing when you can ascend together (laughs) thank you it is it is i'm truly grateful thank you yeah he's the best partner in the world so we uh we, (laughs) we are the supreme team and i'm super grateful for it because you're right that's not always the case and um my husband, I never doubted it. I mean, he's been the biggest, you know, he's been the main one really uh, pushing me out there, you know, telling me that the world needs this and, uh, you know, one of my biggest supporters and fans. So I am forever grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to check in with this caller we have here who's been holding. Caller, I want to see caller 1195. Did you have a question about Misty's story for so far, or were you calling in for a reading? Uh, Well, both, actually. Um, I'm like the first um, young lady that that chimed in earlier. You. <laughs> everything is going haywire, you know, mm. and mm. you know, with the balance, like you know, you was just saying something that hit me. Um, you said something like, um, I can't even. It's so much that you said <laughs> that you know you have to get <laughs> back on balance when you're when you're <laughs> off. When okay, so when you when you're off, like you know, it's so much stuff that's going on with my life, um, and it it hit me like blindsided me. Right, mm-hmm. and I knew exactly mm-hmm. what I wanted to do. I know what I was doing. I know where you know my family was. I know you know you have to visualize what you want to do. Then I got mm-hmm. blindsided, and mm-hmm. now I'm 
stuck and I just feel like it's it's hard to get back to that person I was I just was. Um I you mm-hmm. know, feeling like you live in a lie or you know, um but it's hard to get back on you know, on the good foot. How do you and it's easier mm-hmm. said than done. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. easier said mm-hmm. than done. Um, I don't mm-hmm. know if I'm making any sense, but <laughs> well, what is your name? What is your name? Um, my name, my name is Deanna. Just your, okay, first Deanna. name. That's cool. Okay, and did you want to collect her date of birth then? Yes, please. When is your birthday? Um, October twenty first, eighty one. Okay. So what we'll do really is cool. circle. That's so funny. Okay. You are like <laughs> we're gonna second Okay, go ahead. October twenty first. Well I'm gotcha. saying we're gonna Okay. We're gonna circle back to the readings because I do have just about fifteen more minutes or so. So I appreciate okay. you, Deanna, and we will come back to you uh, uh during the reading portions, okay? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. You know for I, your patience. <laughs> I appreciate you. I really mm-hmm. wanted to get an opportunity to talk with you because you've mentioned many times the phrase mm-hmm. tapped in. You know, you got to be yes. tapped into yourself and your soul. And what I know about you is that you are a practitioner of the EFT or emotional mm-hmm. freedom technique or tapping, as it is sometimes known, that you uh, are facilitator of this. How did you come to encounter tapping, and then what moved you then into being a facilitator for other people to learn this modality? Sure, sure. So about 10 years ago, I was teaching meditation at a facility here in Buckhead, and I got invited to go on a trip to Japan. Um, and that, you know, all expenses paid, all accommodations, everything. So that would have seemed like the trip of a lifetime. The only issue is that I have had flight anxiety. At that point, I had lifelong flight anxiety. So I was really terrified. Even from the moment I said yes, I felt a tightness in my solar plexus, like, oh, my God, that's a 14-hour flight. What am I going to do? And so I was super anxious about it. I just happened to go to a holistic health fair the day before my flight was supposed to take off. I was talking to one of the practitioners there. I was telling her about this flight anxiety. I was feeling anxious, nervous, stomach was churning, all of that as I was talking about it. And she said, come here, sit down, let me tap on you. And I was like, okay, um, oh, Kurt, I don't know what that means or what it does, <laughs> but I'll, I'll try it. Sure, why not? So um, she just started tapping on different points on my face, on my body, and she was, you know, uh, getting me to really talk about what I was really afraid of. She asked me, what are you really afraid of? And it all just kind of came up. I cried a bit. I, I just, you know, it kind of washed over me, if you will. The next morning, I got on the flight. And even that same night, I was like, we'll see. I felt I felt a relief, but we'll see. We'll see what I feel like tomorrow when that plane takes off. So I got on the plane the next morning, and I felt free. You know, all of that mm. anxiety, all of that tension, all of that stuff that I used to feel, I just felt light. I felt free 14 hours there, 14 hours back. I watched movies. I was sleeping. I was kicking it. I was good. Mm-hmm. And um, I, when I got back, I said, I have to learn that technique that that sister did on me. I don't know what she did, but I'm going to learn. <laughs> so I started studying that. Uh, that was 10 years ago, and I've been using it ever since. And, and 10 years full circle, I've been teaching it uh, this year. I had my first workshop last year. I've been teaching it every Thursday in January. Uh, This Thursday, actually, the 30th is the last workshop in January, and we are going to be tapping through Next Level Living. And so um, tapping is an incredible tool. Most people are familiar with Reiki. They're familiar with uh, meditation. They're familiar with acupuncture and different things. But not many are familiar with EFT. It is a simple technique. Uh, that is composed of tapping and talking, 
It matters where you tap and it matters what you say while you're tapping. And so that's mm-hmm. what a practitioner is there to help you do. They're there to help you facilitate the uh, tapping and talking because how we speak to ourselves is of the utmost importance. And we don't, a lot of us don't really realize that, but what we say really has an effect on our, even our subtle body, you know, um, our mm-hmm. energetic body. And so um, the tapping does several different things, but one of the things that the tapping does is it distracts your conscious mind so that we can implant new suggestions into your subconscious mind so that they really take Mm. hold and have a life-changing effect. Um, And I could get much more in-depth, but I am hosting a class tomorrow, uh, Wednesday evening, at a place called Eclipse Over Roswell um, out off of, um, I think it's South Atlanta Road in Roswell. It's Eclipse Over Roswell. I'll be teaching from mm-hmm. 7 to 9 p.m. tomorrow, and we go in depth into what tapping is, how it works, why it works, and then we will do a guided tapping meditation on anxiety because I feel like anxiety is something that almost everybody can relate to. Mm-hmm. We've all felt it before, and so we're going to make some changes and how we react with anxiety. Um, so I'm going to help discharge a lot of those anxious feelings that people may be feeling. Mm. And yeah. this is, you said the last in of four that you've done in the month of January, are these like a cycle of teachings or is it a single time that you can grasp the concept of it or, or how does it work with the instructions? Sure. Sure. Yeah, you can drop in. Um, Of course, with anything, consistency is key. So I do recommend, you know, all four weeks um, because there are different themes each month. So January is tapping through our breakthrough. Uh, February is going to be self-love. So we're going to be tapping through different themes in the area of self-love. So I do recommend if you, if you want to come all four are preferable However, you can always drop in for one or two classes or whenever your schedule allows, and you will still get the full concept. I will still explain the topic. I'll explain the tapping. We'll still do the guided meditation. We'll do a group exercise. So you can still get everything one by one if that's what your schedule allows for. But consistent practice is always best. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is an in-person class. Do you you also host mm-hmm. online workshops? I will be. I will be, actually. So these are the in-person classes, again, this week, Wednesday, 7 to 9 p.m. at Eclipse Over Roswell, and then Thursday from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at a place uh, off of 575 Boulevard Southeast is mm-hmm. the address for that. Um, so I'll be there in person. However, Um, I am building my uh, YouTube channel and my online presence as well. So I will be hosting online workshops, uh, online uh, EFT meditations, um, and just online coaching. I'll be doing a lot of online video work um, and things of that nature. Uh, So that is coming soon. So be sure to follow me on IG, Facebook, uh, for all the updates and links for the online classes that I'll be hosting. Well, and I know that you're, like, super busy because we were trying to get you on the calendar because you also have a forthcoming book that's being released. I do. I do. I do. Yes. That, well, that's what I was going to say that I didn't want to get jump into that. But, yes, that is the uh, reason for the delay on some of the online classes because I have these deadlines I must meet for my publisher. So all of my energy is, is going towards that right now. But, yes, I have a book. Um, that is currently the first half is into the publisher. Second half is going to be going in soon and we're shooting for publication in mid March. So be on the lookout for that. The title is focus, redirect the magnifying glass of your life to live the life of your dreams. So Mm. 20 different areas of focus, 20 different areas that we can focus on in our life for best results. And, again, I I really wrote the book because we tell ourselves to focus. We tell our children to focus. You know, we beat ourselves up when we don't focus. And yet we don't practice focus. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not in a habit. We're not in a society 
where we're taught to focus. We're in a society where we practice a lot of distraction. And so Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, number one, when you decide that you're going to develop a focused practice, then the question is, what do you focus on? So uh, I wrote the book kind of in response to that. So it's 20 uh, shorter chapters on different areas of your life to focus on uh, to really uh, break through to your next level of living. Oh, well, on this show, we love books. You know, my little yes. librarian heart still beats down inside of me, and I get excited <laughs> over the written word. So yes. I'll definitely be me keeping too. an eye out for that uh, publication Wonderful. when it comes Wonderful. out. Wonderful. Now, you mentioned that, you know, you're doing real estate closings in terms of attorney work. Um, and you're also, uh, are you in doing mediation for people who need uh, a, a neutral advocacy? Uh, not on the legal side. On the spiritual okay. side, I do a lot of, uh, you know, couples and, and things like that and kind of mediation okay. and, and uh, coaching that way, but not on the legal side, no. Yeah, I, I'm okay. sticking to the paperwork, the stress-free, you know, document, sign here, sign here, and sign here. And that's it, okay. You know? so, yeah, <laughs> Transactional I'm, I'm legal work, okay. Exactly, exactly, the stress-free stuff. Um, so, right. yeah, no, not at this juncture. Um, okay. And really, to be honest, I'm, I'm like I said, I, I, my goal is to really fully transition out of uh, the legal practice um, at some point. But for now, I work with a bunch of different title companies and closing law firms, and I handle their, their real estate closings. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, in terms of your work as the spiritual attorney, what kinds of assistance can you provide people? What's your range of services? Sure, sure, absolutely. So uh, one of my uh, main services are my readings. That's what I get probably the most of um, in combination with EFT. But for the readings, I do um, tarot readings, oracle card readings, birth, love, and destiny card readings. Um, I know a lot of people are probably curious about what the birth, love, and destiny card readings are. If you're interested in reading more about it, you can feel free to go to my website, uh, thespiritualattorney.com, and that's T-H-E, thespiritualattorney.com. Check the spelling of spiritual. I had one lady say, I'm pulling it up, and I can't find it. I can't find it. And I looked at it, and I said, you're missing just one eye. (laughs) <laughs> Just one more <laughs> high and spiritual attorney there, and we'll be there. So, yep, the spiritual attorney, uh, and I have more information on, on what each of those is. Um, I also do energy work. So I clear mm-hmm. chakras using crystals, sound therapy, and aromatherapy. Um, so I have 30-minute sessions for that, or I also have hour sessions, which are much more in-depth. Um So that's also another popular service that I have. The EFT, um, I mainly teach that. Uh, However, I do work with individuals that, you know, I tell people if you have suffered any kind of trauma or you have some really deeply substantially held beliefs that you're looking to work through, you definitely want to work with a practitioner. Um, Mm -hmm. So I do work with people individually on EFT. We develop a very personal and in-depth script together, and I Mm -hmm. tap with you uh, through the script. Um, So I'm happy to work with people individually on EFT. And I also do spiritual life coaching. Um, So that is one of my uh, also main areas. I do a lot of coaching uh, for people, coaching, counseling, consulting, And uh, I am also a corporate wellness trainer. So I go to Mm -hmm. different companies, law firms, corporations, uh, law schools, all of that. Um, And I train people on different wellness topics. I have a lot of speaking topics. I have weekly programming, weekly workshops, et cetera. Um, So that is another thing that is keeping me quite busy (laughs) with, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, getting that whole area gathered and and scheduled and all of that. So, um, but those are my main uh, areas of what I offer. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, y'all need to follow her on Instagram because you can get a sense of how busy she is. Because uh, <laughs> she's got videos and interviews and workshops and quite an active feed. So I definitely have been following you for the last couple of weeks and uh, mm-hmm. needing a break because you're yeah. so busy. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you're yes. just like one person. But it is a beautiful year for all the mm-hmm. flourishing of the seeds that we've planted previously to start to, you know, really bear fruit. And that's an exciting and beautiful place to be. And I'm sure you're loving it. I am. I truly am grateful. I, You know, it's interesting because it seems like at the top of the year, the universe was like, you asked for it, you got it. Here you go. You know, and it, <laughs> everything just started coming to me. And then I found myself complaining to my husband. I was like, oh, my God, my phone is ringing off the hook. I'm getting a request for this. Somebody just booked me. You know, they want me to speak here, blah, 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 blah. And he said, well, it sounds like you're getting everything you asked for. And I said, mm-hmm. I guess you're right. <laughs> so so right. now I'm, I'm refining my order with the universe. Now I'm like, okay, universe, let me, let me adjust this order just a little bit. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so, right. You know, be, be specific when you place your orders with the universe. You know, I just told, I said, the universe, I just want it all. Just pour it on me. And then it started coming. I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast. Right. Did I say all? <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm I'm refining my uh my request now. <laughs> right. Yes. Break it up into seasons, okay? Let's, right. Let's have a... <laughs> but exactly. no, it's exciting because that means Amen. that there's a flowering and expansion for everyone right now. So that there's Absolutely. more conversations being had and more services being delivered and more knowledge being passed Absolutely. on. So that's the beautiful heart of it all, you know. Yes, yes. So so here's the thing. I find in my work and and like I said, it's not um so I don't, I don't claim that I, I've covered everybody, let's just put it like that. But I do find that the vast majority of people that I'm interacting with right now are falling into one of two categories. Either everything is going great and things are flowing and they're like, oh, my God, this is the year. This is everything I asked for. Or I find that they're in another category of everything is going haywire. You know, things mm-hmm. are falling apart. I'm confused. You know, I don't know what is happening. And, you know, like the two sisters that called into the show, both of them started off their conversation with everything is going haywire. That was mm-hmm, right. for both of them. <laughs> and so I'm getting that a lot, actually. Um, you know, everything mm-hmm. is just all over the place. It's falling apart. It's confused. It's chaotic. And so, again, I tell people when they're in that space, give thanks because things mm-hmm. are falling apart for you so that they can come together. The universe is recalibrating a path that is more favorable for you at this time. And so you may be in a holding pattern right now mm-hmm. while the universe is recalibrating. And so even when people are in distress and in despair and they don't know what to do, I tell them just get very still and get very quiet and do nothing at all. When you don't know what to do, mm-hmm. do nothing at all, mm-hmm. you know. And so um, – just, you know, kind of shouting out the answers to those those two sisters that called in. Just a general advice would just to be get very still, get very quiet. And I feel like a lot of the chaos is as a result of our own resistance to what is happening. Um, you mm-hmm. know, when we're resisting what is, that's when things can seem very difficult and definitely chaotic. Um and so for anybody that is in that state of, I don't know what is happening right now, um, again, whatever is happening, if you can do your best to just accept it for what it is, it's not mm-hmm. good, it's not bad, we're not putting labels on it, we're not judging it. It is an experience that you are having at this juncture, and you can begin to ask yourself, ask the universe, what is this experience trying to teach me? What is this Mm -hmm. showing me right now about myself and about my life um, that I need to know? Um, So Mm -hmm. uh, those are just two, a couple little nuggets for the two sisters that called in and for anybody else that is feeling like, you know, they're not on the side of everything is flowing and everything is going great. And they're on that other side. 
those are just a couple steps uh, that can bridge mm-hmm. that gap. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I always yeah. tell people that, you know, when the caterpillar is in the cocoon, it actually dissolves and turns to goo. Mm-hmm. It's unrecognizable Ooh, yes. from its Absolutely. previous caterpillar state. It's just it's DNA matter that is held within that cocoon being still while it mm-hmm. reshapes itself through a biological urge, right? So, like, if your life mm-hmm. has turned to goo, you know what I'm saying? And it's unrecognizable. Uh, just, yes. like you said, being in that stillness, knowing that what is going to be reconstituted from the mm-hmm. essential parts, what is not going to be brought into your new being is material that's not needed for your mm-hmm. new expression, right? So just realizing mm-hmm. you're going to be that butterfly eventually, but you're going to have to go through this beautiful process of Absolutely. utter deconstruction and, and reconstruction. Absolutely. And you're going to do that Absolutely. multiple times. Like once you do it and realize mm-hmm. that that's what's happened for you, then you mm-hmm. ride through the next cycle of transformation mm-hmm. more easily because you recognize it now. It's not as much of a stranger to say, oh, my God, mm-hmm. everything is shifted out of my grasp, you know. So yeah. I'm yeah. sure your yeah. migration from not being the attorney side to being fully mm-hmm. in 5D will shift again in another Absolutely. three or five or ten years, and it will be Absolutely. unrecognizable but a next level from where you've Absolutely. been in this first cycle. And that's the beautiful part. Absolutely. You're like, bring it on. Yes. If I'm busy now, I'll, I'll be worldwide, on. right? <laughs> I welcome it. I receive it. I say, yes. I receive it. And absolutely. But I think you said one of the keys, too, is that you have to know that you are here to be a butterfly. Do you know what I mean? Because Mm -hmm. if you're in the cocoon and everything is turning to goo and you feel helpless, powerless, victimized, and like, you know, that just is what it is and that's how it's always going to be, then, yeah, things are going to seem very dark. You know, Mm -hmm. but when you know Mm -hmm. that you are here to be a butterfly, you are here to rise, you are Mm -hmm. here to be the light, you are a powerful being, you know, the universe is responding to you. You know what I mean? You're not responding Mm -hmm. to it. We think that we're responding to things that happen to us, but we are the cause and everything Mm -hmm. else is an effect. And so when Mm -hmm. you know that you are that butterfly and that this is, Uh, Again, a transition, it's part of the journey. It's a leg of the journey that you get to experience that is going to teach you some very important lessons that you need to carry with you when you do become the butterfly. Um, Mm -hmm. But you have to see yourself as that butterfly. You have to see yourself as a powerful, divine, unique being that you are. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the more you identify as just this cut off, you know, uh, powerless entity, then that is at the crux of why things might seem so chaotic and headed, um, and, and hectic rather. You know, if you feel powerless, then yes, you're gonna you're gonna feel like it can never change. But the fact is mm-hmm. that you get to decide and you get to change it. Um, so mm-hmm. um, it's yeah, just just know that. Uh, you are divine, a divine and unique expression of the creator himself, herself, itself. And so when you know that, no matter what your senses are telling you, no matter what you're feeling at the moment, you will know that it does not have power over you. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I knew I was going to enjoy the conversation this evening. I knew it. <laughs> I was been looking forward to this. You definitely yeah. are speaking my language, and I Thank was you, very sir. appreciative of your kindred soul on journey yeah. of truthful expression yeah. to the highest degree. It's such a beautiful thing, and I'm giving you a virtual hug through the phone here, right? <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm giving it right back to you, big hug. So I appreciate it. this opportunity as well. Thank you for having me. Well, and also, so wait, if people are in Atlanta, they can actually catch you at a psychic fair coming up this weekend, yes. correct? Absolutely. I will be reading at a psychic fair on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., again at 575 Boulevard Southeast. 
Uh, I will be there with several other uh, readers and vendors, et cetera. Shout out to my dear friend, Excel. He is the founder for the Institute of uh, Personal and Spiritual Growth, which is a great uh, organization here. And he's going to be hosting the fair for us this Saturday. Um, again, follow me on Instagram and Facebook for all the updates with the dates and events and all the happenings. Um, both my Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube are The Spiritual Attorney. And also my website is thespiritualattorney.com. So uh, mm-hmm. if you're interested in coming out to this Saturday or any, I have some several other things coming up. I'll be speaking at a women's leadership conference on February 8th, and that's going to be a huge event for all of my sisters. Let's get in formation, ladies, and uh, come out to this event <laughs> and um, get our empowerment and, 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 you know, reconnect with our divine feminine there. I think it's going to be very powerful for all the sisters in Atlanta. Well, I am excited to connect with you. I was going to come out last month, and I think it wound yeah. up being a storm that day and I just said oh I'm not, I can't do it <laughs> but uh-huh. I w- <laughs> plan to flow through and see you meet you in person at the event yeah. on Saturday and also connect with it. the community there and I hope that in the future we'll be able to convince you to come out to one of the Vibrary Elevation Station pop-ups uh, in the I spring when the it. next one will be <laughs> so, I would love well, it. We it's got- interesting because we, we missed each other both times because I was going to come to your event. I think it was on the 19th, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I forget <laughs> when I, I had another event at that time, but I, I was thinking, man, I wish I could, I could link up with you there, but next time I will be there for sure. Oh, we're going to yeah. get on your advance calendar because you stay busy. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we've gotten to the time in the show. The last segment, we thank you all the callers who've been waiting uh, and listening, not just waiting, but listening through the phone line. And those of you who are connected virtually, this episode, you could also be hearing it then at some future point on either iTunes or any of the podcast directories or on YouTube, Mm -hmm. wherever you're joining from and whenever you're hearing this know that it is the right time for this information to be delivered to you and this is the person whose story you were meant to hear and connect with today so Misty I'm mm-hmm. super excited about this uh, the library is like a living collection of resources for peer- people to find at, when they need it and as we know the divine always puts uh, information in the form of people or experiences in front of you when you're seeking an answer and so I know that this interview will be somebody's answer at some point in the future and that's a beautiful thing yeah. so Thank now as we, enter, wow. <laughs> as we enter the part for the readings I want everyone to understand this is a show then that is recorded and it is for the public so as you're entering this space of receiving spiritual guidance in public forum understand it for what it is and uh, if it reaches some point where it's a point of uncomfortableness, uh, realizing that you're having it's gone into this kind of area, then please do consider reaching out for a more personal reading. And also, these are this is a mini conversation. This is not a full fledged uh, session, as you know. Uh, you can contact Missy for that also offline, so that it can really get in depth and into the woods. And you'll just get an example of the kind of a assistance that Misty is able to provide. So that's kind of our ground rules. We'll be kind of looking to keep it moving. We've got three people actually who've requested readings at this point, so that's all we'll be able to fit in this evening. Misty, did you have any uh, guidance or statements about the readings that you'll be providing this evening? And thank you as well in advance for offering to provide on-air consultations tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Yeah, I'm just going to do some brief birth card readings. So these are just going to give you some insight into your basic framework. Uh, So essentially who you are, uh, some challenges that you need to be aware of with your card, um, and just some guidance uh, so you can put your finger on who you are and why it is that you do the things that you do. 
I find when I read the birth cards for people, they're like, I, I knew it. I knew it. I just couldn't put it into words, but, you know, I, I knew that my whole life. Um, and so this is just going to give you some confirmation of, uh, you know, uh, what's on your path for you. And I'm sure many of you are already in tune with this, but this will give you a little bit more insight. All right, so we're back to the first caller, caller 6007. Remind me your name again. Yes. I think I jotted it down wrong. Nicole. N- Nicole. Nicole, yes. I had it. Yes, Nicole. Yeah, I did. Yes. <laughs> and you are September 30th, yes? Yes. Okay, my dear. So your birth card is a seven of hearts, which is a beautiful mm. card. It's called the spiritual mm. love card. So seven is a spiritual number. Seven and nines are the two spiritual numbers. All sevens Mm -hmm. and all nines to a large degree, you're here to learn to give freely and let go of materiality. So you're here to let go of your attachments to the physical form. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, (laughs) they will tend to suffer great pain and disappointment. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because Mm -hmm. you all are the two spiritual numbers, you have to rise to a high spiritual level. You have to act out of the highest integrity, and you have to learn to let things and people be exactly as they are. Otherwise, you can mm-hmm. suffer. You will, you will essentially – so pretty much this is what I say for the seven. Your life is like a water hose. And the more you hold on to things and hold on to people and try to control or manipulate or, you know, grab things, you are essentially cutting off the flow in your life. You're cutting off your spiritual power. So just like the water hose, if you can let go – and allow things mm-hmm. to flow to you and allow things and people to be exactly as they are, things will almost be magical. I mean, they will essentially be magical. So, for example, the Seven of Diamonds is called the Millionaire's Card, right? The more these people worry about money, the less of it they will have. The more that they just mm-hmm. live in their purpose and they are, they're not attached to money, they're not worried about it or trying to control it, they can literally become millionaires. Beyonce, for example, is a Seven of Diamonds. So for your card, you are the spiritual love card. And what that means is that in your relationships in particular, you must let people be exactly as they are. You have to give (laughs) love to them and let them be Uh exactly as they are. And all sevens have issues with control uh, to a degree. They like to try to (laughs) control things and people to a degree outside of them. But that will always Mm. bring you... Uh, difficulties that will always cause friction and uh, resistance. Um, On the high side, as a seven of hearts, you all can make some of the greatest counselors in the world. You can always find a listening, understanding, and sympathetic ear in a seven of hearts person. Uh, So you are actually here. (laughs) Part of your life path is to make great personal sacrifices for others and give much to the world. (laughs) So it says you oh must my find <laughs> Yes. It says you must find a way to give to the world to attain peace and satisfaction. And this usually manifests as teaching, counseling, or consulting others. So that is part of your life path. Now here's a challenge for you you have to be aware of. Your health should mm-hmm. be watched carefully. Uh, because you bring mm-hmm. some past life karma into this lifetime that can manifest as some health challenges. So you have to watch your health. You have to take care of your physical health. You, you may have some mm. certain physical habits uh, that are actually karmic in nature. Those are brought over from a previous lifetime, and they might be hard yeah. to stop. Um, yeah. and, and they're unhealthy for the most part. They're unhealthy and difficult to let go of, but it is part of your life path mm-hmm. to do just that, to end those difficult attachments in this lifetime so that you can reap the rewards of having good health. And, and prosperity, because that is part of your karma, letting go of those things. You, have, you know, if you continue, then you will, again, continue to face the challenges. Um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, it says whenever there's a problem in your life, it calls for a lifestyle change or a need to let go of some part of that attachment. Right. So essentially letting go of those attachments is part of your, your karmic path here. Um, 
but some of the most successful financial managers and business owners have this card. Uh, you have a, a high amount of ambition and drive. You know how to be successful. Mm-hmm. Yours is definitely a success card. Um, but you will definitely have to balance your desire for material success with, again, letting go of the attachment to it. So, yes, yes, Mm -hmm. you are very successful. Yes, you can certainly have the success, but it can't be uh, the be-all, end-all. It can't be the the driving force. It can't be the reason Um, because otherwise, if it is challenged or uh, if you face challenges in that area, you continuing to hold on to it will cause restriction in your life. So yes, go for the success. Yes, you can have it, but know that uh, you can't worry about it and you can't do it for the success, if that makes right. any sense. <laughs> okay. Everything makes sense. Are you kidding okay. me? Are you kidding me? Oh my, yes. I, I, really fast. I'll try to, you know, this. everything was, 2014, the name Queen Empress came to me and I just named my phone that, mm. my phone, you know, like the iPhone has a name. So that name just mm-hmm. came to me and, you know, I always wanted to be a mother, like all this stuff, like I know I'm a nurturer, like that's all a part of me, right? So with this mm-hmm. affirmation that came to me, <clears throat> the, the name Queen Empress now has meaning, I know what that means. So now what yeah. you said, my whole life with all my um, my personal, life, I sacrificed myself. And, and internally, yes. I knew that was my job. And that mm. was the part where you were talking about with me holding on. Because it was like, yeah. I see you. I know what kind of love you need. And it's unconditional. I'm going to give it to you now. And I was just giving, 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 you know, because I knew that was my job. Like, I'm here to, like, love unconditionally. Like, you know, yes. that, that's just, you know, what I am. I am the lover. And then when you, I, you know, so I'm like, okay, I, I work with people. I, and I, people talk to me. Like, they tell me my voice. Mm-hmm. Everything is just a healer. So I'm like, okay, am I a psychiatrist? No, no, no. I, it's not medicine. People don't need medicine. Okay, I'm a psychologist. So mm-hmm. my undergrad, mm-hmm. psychology. It didn't feel right. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what, counseling. So my master's yep. degree counseling. was counseling. It still didn't feel, I quit in September. A couple of months ago, I quit. Mm. I said, this is not, okay. I said, you know, I need to, you know, this is not what I'm supposed to do. So, you know, so when you said, you know, go on my own, it like, and, you know, and that was another thing that kept to me. It was like, okay, and I, I'm not in it for the, if I wanted mm-hmm. to be a millionaire, I would be, I am a man. Uh, the things that I've been through in my life, I always knew that, you know, Looking at my mm-hmm. side, this this is manifestation. I'm making something happen out of nothing, and more yes. than what I expected. If I wanted to be a millionaire, I would have that financial thing, but that's not what it's about for me. My, you know, my mm. I know what I'm here to do, and you know, and the the clouding part for me was like how you said that the name came to you, the the spiritual turn. Like it's like yes. it's, I was so cut up and like, what am I? What what, what what like what is this called? Like I don't know. What, right. I'm not a psychic. Like you know, so that was mm. you know. So now I'm just being transparent, literally just yes. being transparent, and people are coming Wonderful. to me for that transparency and just saying like, you're helping me. You know, so when you said like that business and you know. I'm going to have that, like, you know, that's what I feel now. So yes. all that validation mm-hmm. and everything that you were saying, like, this whole show, I appreciate it. I appreciate oh, it. And so the, to the sister that came after me, I just came out of that space of, like, wow. like when you said, be silent mm-hmm. and be still, I just came out of that. I just came Wonderful. out of that because it was like, oh, oh my goodness. goodness. What is this? Yeah. What is this? Oh, oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Like, okay, okay, okay. And then it was like, oh my God! So now what though? You know? And then it was like, right? And then something yeah. you said, get go, but go back to your TV, calm down, go, you know, go back to your job, and and I just came out of that. So you know, that's okay. you know, I just want to you know send that right along to you know because I think that you know mm-hmm. she's asking but I appreciate it I appreciate it thank you so much oh, thank you my pleasure my pleasure <laughs> blessings to you my dear blessings to you thank you, you just too. go with thank the flow you, thank you. and continue to yes. act in your gift yes. of listening and being I am that there. counselor yes. that consultant yes Yes, you are going to be yes. great. So, yes, <laughs> blessings to you, my thank dear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I love you so much. My thank pleasure. You. 
And my pleasure. Much love Thank to you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for sharing your reading and your excitement and your energy is just bubbling mm. over. So I appreciate that you sharing that. You're reading the number. I'm like, is that my number? Because that sure sounds <laughs> like me. <laughs> but, you know, there's a really? commonness in everybody, you know, in terms of uh, That's true. Th- th- we're That's unique true. and yet we're the same. So I, I just had to laugh because I was like, well, I take any Everything is a spiritual lesson, you know what I'm saying, whether it's for me or That's not, true. I can receive as well. So I'm glad to be a fly That's on the true. wall here receiving this. So, yeah. All yeah. right. I, you're going to have to yes, get so your I, birthday after this, and I'll have to uh, tell you. <laughs> now I'm I know. I'm like, it might be. You never know. <laughs> but yeah, no, but that's a very uh, in-depth mm-hmm. uh, reading that you've got going on mm-hmm. there. So, okay, we're going to move right along to oh, Deanna. Yes, Deanna. Yes. I'm here. Hi. Hey, Hi. Deanna. Hey. <laughs> you are October 21st, yes? Yes. Okay. So I love this card. This is, um, I don't have a favorite card, but I I do love the Ace of Clubs. Actually, the sister that I mentioned earlier, one of my spiritual mentors, uh, she is also an Ace of Clubs as well. And I just ran into another sister, Ace of Clubs. So Mm. Ace of Clubs, so I'm attracting a lot of you all. Um, And I'm an Ace as well. I'm an Ace of Diamonds. So we actually have a lot in common. Uh, Ace stands for the desire, the the spark. Out of the nothingness of the zero comes the one. So we are like the spark. We're the seed. We are uh, the desire for something more. And the ace of clubs deals with a desire for knowledge. You all are perpetual students, perpetual, super curious. Mm -hmm. You want to know. You want to know the inner workings of things, uh, immense libraries, super curiosity, uh, you know, super amount of curiosity, uh, which will usually keep you very youthful, even until the last years of your life, you will have essentially eternal uh, youth on your side because of your natural curiosity. Um, Now, here's the thing as an ace, you all are very, uh, very social, like you all can make great friends, people enjoy talking to you, and you enjoy talking uh, to people, you have great communication skills. However, as an ace, Uh, we like to take time for ourselves. We're very much loners Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, Mm -hmm. Even though we make, you know, friends, we have a lot of friends, but we do like to be alone um, because we feel like we need to recharge. We need to go within. ACE also stands for the search for self. So in everything, we're really searching for ourselves, and in particular with the ACE of clubs, one of the main reasons why you're so curious about everything is because you're, you're kind of looking for um, that insight and that knowledge that will help you understand yourself better in the world around you. Um, so super smart. You can use your creativity to generate money in uh, the arts in particular, the arts, groups of women, anywhere where creativity can be used for a profit. Um, You're very witty, avid talkers, um, and also your mothers are typically an important figure in your life. The Ace of Clubs mother (laughs) is usually a very powerful uh, woman with a Mm -hmm. lot of intuition, and your relationship as an Ace of Clubs with your mother also kind of sets the stage for how you deal with women in general throughout your life, um, period. Mm -hmm. Um, So your mother is typically a pivotal uh, uh, figure for you. It says the later years of your life will not be satisfactory to you unless you turn to spirituality for guidance. Uh, The later years in your life can either bring material problems or spiritual success if you have tapped into your spiritual side. And so the happiest aces of clubs are those who have um, begun or on a spiritual quest for knowledge as well. Um, and so you're obviously on that path. Um, and so here's the thing about the Ace of Clubs. Uh, you all are also known as the divine discontent because often you might find yourself discontent with your current circumstances and needing to travel or change your work or make certain changes in your life to satisfy your inner restlessness. Um, so you may find yourself just all of a sudden saying, I'm going to just go on a trip or I'm going to move or I need to quit this job. And that is part of your natural <laughs> inner restlessness. 
Um, Mm -hmm. So, again, nothing wrong with it. That's just part of your path. Um, I find that when I tell all aces of clubs, because you all are so curious and because you're so like you're, you just want to devour knowledge and information, uh, definitely go within the, all the answers you need are inside of you. And so what I said earlier applies definitely for you when you feel like confused and everything is falling apart and you don't know what to do and all of this and all of that, and you're searching for answers. Again, we have a natural programming or actually really a tendency rather. I don't want to say it's natural, but we have a tendency to look outside of ourselves for the information you're seeking, but really tune within because you all are, uh, Uh, highly intuitive, highly in tune. Uh, You are very uh, adept at receiving messages from the other side. And so in seeking your answers, take the time to center yourself, take that alone time that we enjoy so much, and definitely go within. Again, you don't have to to put a label on it. You don't have to say God or ancestors or, or most high or Allah or anything like that. But just begin to ask the questions, center yourself, and just begin to ask the questions out loud that you would like the answers to. And then just begin to pay attention, begin to notice, you know, the signs and the symbols and the the answers that are going to be coming to you. Um, But that's the best advice I can give you as an ace of clubs, is that truly all the answers you need are within you. Um, So that should be a little bit of help, hopefully. (laughs) So what, you know, what is going yeah. on with you? Mm-hmm. It It is very, um, <clears throat> I can't even speak right now. Um, my mother is a very, like, she is very intuitive, like you said. Um, she mm-hmm. is the, you know, I talk to her every day. She's very supportive, even though I feel like mm-hmm. I'm, you know, um, she, I, I like to say she's a Libra. I'm, well, I'm, I hate that. I, I love that I'm growing into her, but you know how it is—the little conflict thing. But I know she knows what's best for me at all times. Mm. You know, mm. Um, mm. as far as every well, you know, as far as everything else, and right now you're right. I want to get up and leave. I want mm-hmm. to get up, mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I want to either move to Georgia with my sister, or I mm-hmm. or. Or um, if, if it doesn't get any better for me as far as my mm-hmm. marriage, I didn't I didn't hear mm-hmm. you say anything about love. You know, I, I was I, it, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I can definitely uh, tell you about that because yours is a very interesting card when it comes to relationships. I donn't want to get I don't want to do too <laughs> much, but let me let me just give you a little bit because I think this may be of insight. Ace of Clubs is a card that has the ideal lover in mind. They have a concept of this one person, the one, in their mind. Uh, they are, I don't want to say this on air because some people don't, don't want me to say that, but put it like this. They have been looking for the one for a long time. And if the person that they're with, they believe that this person is the one, they will do anything, go anywhere, sacrifice anything. They will give this person everything they will treat them especially if you are loved if you are the one for an ace of clubs you are blessed because that ace of clubs will love Mm -hmm. you like no other however if the person that they're with is not the one then they will the ace of clubs person hmm, how do i put this will essentially use the other in some way. Like, they'll be like, oh, well, they Mm -hmm. do this for me, so I'll keep them around. Or I like this about them, so I'll keep them around. Or I guess this works, so I'll keep them here, you know. But they will not Mm -hmm. be satisfied if that person is not the Mm -hmm. one. Um, You know, they can deal with it. They can keep them around. They can, you know, use and and, and essentially uh, be happy with what's good about the person, but they will not be fulfilled or satisfied. Um, and so because they know they, they have a romantic glow in their eyes and they know that there's a special relationship out there for them. And um, some of, like some of you all just never let that dream go. Like you just hold on to that for your whole life, even when you're with somebody that's not the one, you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, if yeah, if that person is not the one, then it's kind of just like, uh, let me see what what are the benefits in here for me, and then <laughs> and then I can be okay yeah. with that. 
so, yeah. And, you know, you know, I'm not there. Like, right now, mm-hmm. even though my life has been turned upside down with my husband, I mm-hmm. am still trying. I'm having doubts of, mm-hmm. you know, him being that way. And, yeah. um, you know, and so I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know, you know, if I should continue or, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, 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 if, mm-hmm. because I don't want to be in this space again. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's the yeah, hard that's part the about thing. me trying to find myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing about the Ace of Clubs. If they end up in a relationship that fails, like a lot of you all vow to never trust or open up again. Like a lot of you say that, like, I don't want to be in this place again. So I'm never, you know, I'm never coming back this way mm-hmm. again. So, um, yeah. uh, you know, as my dear sister, the uh, ascended master Maya Angelou said, have enough courage to trust love one more time and always one more time, you know, um, mm-hmm. it may not be. Now here's the thing. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I don't mm-hmm. know, you know, what, what you should do at this juncture, but I, I can offer uh, for you to ask your ancestors. Um, I, I'm a strong and firm believer because it has worked miracles many, many, many times in my life when I call on my ancestors Mm -hmm. for difficult matters of the heart like that, difficult Mm -hmm. questions of the heart where my path is like a fork in the road and I don't know which, which way to go. I, I am Mm -hmm. a firm and strong believer in asking your ancestors, just say ancestors, I need help. Show me, you Mm -hmm. know, which way I should go in my relationship. Show me what I need to see in my relationship. So I know which way to go. And now here's the thing, if you're going to ask that, you have to be prepared and open to receive mm. it, you know. In order yeah. to, to get the answers that we need, we have to be willing to let go of our fixed ideas about certain things, you know. So yeah. if you're, That's you know, prepare, yes, prepare yourself, prepare yourself if you're going to ask the questions, Um but be open to receiving the answers objectively. Again, don't judge it. It's not good or bad. It just is what it is, you know. And um, like I said, you know, the answers you need are truly within you and your soul knows. You all are old souls, the aces of clubs, believe it or not. You all have been <laughs> here. And, um, and so I would definitely – uh, recommend you seeking your ancestors to give you that guidance that you need on that question. Um, and yeah. one other thing too, you sure. actually said, you know, you like to be around people, you, you're successful around people, women, especially, you know, I own a, mm-hmm. I owned a salon. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I just closed yep. it back in 2018. And okay. so that was funny to me. I was just like, oh, wow, yeah, that is true, yes. you know. Absolutely, um, absolutely. So I, yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. um, I know that you say you were an attorney. Um, I am. And, I am. and do you have, like, fields for cases or, um, or is, you know, how does that work? If, you know, you are you you can, Do I have fields you know? for cases? Right, like, question, you know. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Right, fields for cases, like you know. Oh, oh, oh! Um, I see what you mean. Did I get a feeling about? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and that's why. Okay. So that's okay. another reason why I transitioned out of criminal law. I did that for a little while, and I did not like that dichotomy it was a lot. at all. It was a lot because energetically, yeah. you know, again, knowing mm-hmm. what I know and having to do my job were in deep conflict yeah. sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, yeah. I, I got out of that fairly fast. <laughs> Cause yeah, I, I know, can understand I that. I had an obligation to my client, but spiritually, morally, uh, energetically, I didn't like the karma that I felt like I was generating for myself in some cases. So I just, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why I said I how do you the get... stress-free stuff. <laughs> Uh-huh. One thing, one last thing. How do you? How would I sure. get back on track? Remember, I, I said the first time mm-hmm. I, I am off. I'm off. Like, like I said, mm-hmm. I want to get up and run, and I'm mm-hmm. unsure. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. and it's all stemming from like, I mean, I'm, I literally was like 
blindsided by mm-hmm, everything. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm, I'm I'm trying to work mm-hmm. it, work through it with with my yeah. my situation, but I just yes. don't know. Yes. See, the thing is, I there I'm here. I'm I'm just finding yes. out these things, and yes. he's he's still he's he's moved past it. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, like and you know, it, it happened. Yet. Um, some mm-hmm. yeah, it happened. And he's and he's mm-hmm. flourishing. Like like you said, mm-hmm. I'm I'm down mm-hmm. right now. He's like flourishing yeah. with his career, um, you know. Yeah. And I'm and me now. I'm just like finding out about this, and it's like, right, what? right, right. You, you know, right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, I feel like listen. I was living a lie. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know it. It doesn't feel easy right now. It's simple. It's just not all that easy. Um, I would say definitely uh, if you feel like running, to be honest with you, I would just say run, you know, get some of that restless energy out right now. Right now you have a lot of anxiety, Mm -hmm. a lot of restlessness, Mm -hmm. a lot of tightness. I can tell in your heart chakra, all of that. Um, So I I don't want to say like run away, like move, but I, if you want to take a break, take a weekend, take a, a day, go somewhere, drive, just drive, go to the beach maybe, just get away and have your own space because energetically the two of you are definitely dissonant. You are definitely in disharmony right now. He's on a different frequency mm. than you. And it, and that disharmony, that feedback is almost like a microphone feedback. It's like, ugh, you know, you cringe and, you know, it throws you off. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's mm-hmm. kind of essentially where you are in your in your song, if you will. But to get back in harmony, certain things are going to require fine-tuning. Uh, you're going to have to tune a bit into the frequency that you want to be on. Now, right. in the space that you're in, it's kind of hard to say, oh, I want to be, I want to feel great. I want to be, you know, I want to be happy. I want to be joyful because right now you're processing yeah. a lot of emotions, you know, and mm-hmm. we're taught to just move past things and get over things and just forget about it and move on. But I really feel yes. like there's substantial value in feeling what you feel honoring your feelings, um, really, you know, sitting in them, writing about them. Um, if you have a counselor, I'm happy, you know, if you don't have one, I'm happy to work with we you, do. but talking them out, getting them out, getting them out. Cause right now they're essentially percolating. They're like boiling in your inside of you right now. All of these <laughs> feelings are swirling. And so, um, definitely I would recommend. Will it ever get better get, with it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, you will. With, absolutely, you know, with, with with me and him, or me and the situation. Oh, with you, you and know. him. That's a good question. I would really have to talk to you a little bit more about it because I don't know okay. what the situation yeah. is. I can imagine it's difficult. Mm-hmm. I can imagine it's polarizing a bit right now. Like you all feel like you're totally. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Anytime you try to force energy that is not on the same frequency, it's going to cause friction. It's going to cause disharmony. It's going to cause um, resistance. And that's a lot of what mm-hmm. you're feeling right now. Right now, you're not energetically on the same page. That's clear just from our brief mm-hmm. conversation. So any type of force mm-hmm. to make it work or to put it back together or to, you know, force this connection right now is not uh, going to be helpful. Um, essentially, yeah. you need to take some time. If you want to run away, like I said, for a weekend to recalibrate, I think that would be helpful and recenter your own self, you know, sit in your feelings, write about them. Writing could be very therapeutic for you as well. Journaling, you know, just getting it out of you. And Mm -hmm. again, um, really just kind of stepping back from the situation would be helpful when you're right up in a book, you can't really read it very well, but when you step back from it, and get a little bit mm-hmm. of perspective, you can see things a little bit better. And so I would definitely recommend kind of just stepping back, centering yourself, you know, and tuning your own energy. And there are a variety of different tools to do that. Journaling, EFT would be an incredible tool right now uh, for you as well, tapping through some of this anxiety and heat up feeling you feel. Um, and so there I think are many I'm going to start exercising. I do oh, need to interject here. 
I do need to interject sorry. here because we're in the last two minutes I'm sorry, of the show, sorry, sorry. so I so need to wrap it. But thank you so much All for right, your thank call, you Deanna, yes. and, thank you. and I invite you to, to reach to out. Yes, to yes, Misty in the future. So we're in the final minute here to everyone who was listening on the line that we didn't get to you. Thank you so for tuning in. And please do contact Misty for some yes. uh, private work or come out if you're in the Atlanta area. It's the spiritual com and the spiritual attorney on yes. Facebook and Instagram, Misty. Thank you so thank much you. for joining us. It's been a great conversation, and I look forward to checking in with you about your tapping class personally. And I will thank definitely so have a reading with you so I can get my yes. numbers. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> well. my dear. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. <laughs> I enjoyed myself. And uh, I look forward to uh, meeting with you and giving you a big hug <laughs> and uh, yes. continuing this, this beautiful shared energy. So thank you. Absolutely. Well, to each of you for tuning in, thank you. We'll be back next yeah. week with another interview on the Psychic and Side Show. In the meantime, this week, I just hope and pray for you that your life is filled with so much in the way of blessings, that those blessings spill out from your arms and bless the world around you. The light in me absolutely honors the light in you. Namaste.